I want to keep this market conversation going, as well as a conversation on that jobs report. We're joined now by Rachel Aiken, Rockland Trust Vice President and Portfolio Manager. Uh, so, Rachel, uh, just to start off, uh, we got those top line figures in uh, June's jobs report better than expected, although we did see that unemployment tick upward, uh, which shows that some folks might be coming in off the sidelines. What were some of your reactions to that jobs report? Any points of concern for you? So the jobs report was important for Fed watchers because it gave us a window into two of the very important or top mandates um, for the Fed, both employment as well as inflation. So top of mind, looking at the report, um, I think there was something for everyone as far as what uh, Fed watchers were looking for. Um, of concern, really, when you peel back the numbers is not just uh, looking at the strong actual job creation that there was, but to temper that with the fact that we had unemployment tick up and both the labor participation rate and the employment to population rate, which is a favorite metric for the Fed, um, has really just stayed really much in place. Um, and what you'd want to see as a labor market is healing with supply issues is that you start to see individuals drawn into the market um, and looking for jobs and to see that participation rate climb. We're still some 3 million jobs or 3 million participants, I should say, below where we stood in January of 2020. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on. But you have to take that, that jobs report with a grain of salt in the sense that it is just a single data point. We know the Fed is data dependent. We understand that it's very important for them to have more pieces to the mosaic in order to build a more informed story before making any action, whether it be tapering or even considering uh, what the next step would be as far as raising rates. So I think the, the, the market really liked it because it showed continued strength, continued economic momentum heading forward, but it wasn't enough to really move the needle for the Fed to have to take um, a more aggressive step towards tapering or tightening. And that's probably, Rachel, why we're seeing the market respond the way it is today. They really are embracing this report because it might just be the lukewarm report that they that they were looking for. But you're absolutely right. I mean, as much as we've made progress, we, we are still about 6.8 million jobs short of returning to pre-pandemic levels. When you take like a, a, a high level view of what's happening right now, how long might it take for the economy and the labor market to reach full employment, something the Federal Reserve says it wants to see before it really starts to take its foot off the stimulus pedal. Yeah, sure. Alexis, you know, that that's uh, probably the $1 million question. Um, but I think what we're looking at right now is an employment market that if it was continuing to grow at an average pace of, let's say, five to 600,000 jobs a month, you know, we're still well out 12 months from now where we would look at you know, the levels where we would be prior to the pandemic. So I think there's a lot of work to be done. And I think we're going to be very keenly looking at, as we move forward, you know, what frictional elements are going to be removed from the job market in the sense, you know, what do we have on the front that's going to push, uh, push or allow people to reenter the job market, whether it be, you know, again, improving vaccination rates, the opportunity to re-enter the workforce because there's childcare or schools back in session, um, or do people just feel better coming back into the market? And also something to watch is going to be the expiration of the extended unemployment benefits, something that you know we're very keenly looking at and we'll be looking at at the state level as we continue to get initial jobless claims. Um, that's also something to keep an eye on because that may be a harbinger to tell us how strong job growth may be. And again, showing us that less people are filing for initial jobless claims, therefore entering the market to look for a job, and again, more supply that the labor market so desperately needs. The market, um, Rachel, I, I want to look now at the wider markets. I was reading your note, and you say that markets right now are overdue for a pullback. Uh, what are you thinking could be a catalyst there? So, you know, you're right. We've had such a stair steady climb up with you know, not even a 5% correction in over 280 days. Um, and again, I think we have a very constructive environment with a strong economy, 6% plus growth for the rest of the year. We're going to be entering the earnings season very shortly, and there's the anticipation of 60% earnings growth. You know, we have a consumer that is not only willing and but able to spend to continue to fuel that along. So there's a lot to be optimistic about. 
Um, but I think on the on the negative side of the ledger, it would be hotter than than we are thinking at or seeing in inflation. Um, you know, the Fed is in play, and that, that's always consternation for the market. Um, and also, unfortunately, we're we're looking at you know the Delta variant, which could um, create again the pandemic being a, a larger headwind uh, for the overall market and could cause us to pause and take a step back. All right, we'll have to leave that there. Rachel Aiken, Vice President and Portfolio Manager at Rockland Trust, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great holiday weekend.